Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, I've got a whole bunch of Commodore 64s that I'm uh, working my way through at the moment. Um, this one's uh, one of the C64 uh, Cs. Um, keyboard's uh, seen better days. I've replaced a couple of keys on it. Uh, that one needs uh, the plunger taking out and redoing. I'm going to retrobite this anyway, so uh, and strip it down, clean it a bit like I did with the last one. Um, but that's you know that's a later thing. That's one of the last things I do. But if I just show you what this is doing now, switch this on. This is with a cartridge in, trying to boot the diagnostic car, and you notice the, the car didn't boot. Um, shimmering text. That's typical um, from what I remember back in the day of uh, being a uh, colour ramp issue. Now initially I didn't know this, but I don't know you can see this. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in. We've got uh, what looks like a ton of corrosion or something on here. Can you see this? Uh, rust and some corrosion on those pins. Could be a damaged trace. Um, I'm hoping that's all it is. Could be by the looks of things. Um, or potentially faulty. The other thing I thought was, could be the PLA. Now the PLA on the C64C is merged into this along with a bunch of other sort of TTL logic chips as well. Um, just pressing put some pressure on that to see if we get any response out of the board, but nothing. So the first thing I thought was, okay, well you've got shimmering text, um, it won't boot from carts, keyboard's not doing anything, you just sort of zoom out a bit, sorry about that. Um, yeah, many of the keys are not working, but that doesn't surprise me because the state the keyboard's in. Is that locked? Yeah, I think it has. Um, so, the first thing I thought is, okay, well, let's try a different keyboard on this before I do anything. Um, I check the voltages, by the way, that's important you do. I check the 5 volt, check the 12 volt. Nice clean um, supply there, I've had a look on the scope. Um, so, if I now connect, uh, where's it going? C64 traditional keyboard. And this was a stab in the dark, I've never done this before, I just assumed it would work. It's just a matrix, at the end of the day you've got the same number of keys, it stands to reason it should work. And if you watch the screen again, so you'll see that garbage there when it first comes on, but then it starts to boot the car. Now, initially here you see, it's almost like it's displaying every other character, but that, I put that down to the um, a flickering colour issue. I think what's happening is, uh, even some characters are showing white as the background colour. Now, as it gets through that first test you'll see, start to be able to see what's going on here so zero page okay stack page okay screen ram okay ram test okay ram test two okay it's the pla bad now you know that, that i guess that's pointing towards this chip but having then seen this the corrosion on the uh, pins there i'm suspecting it's more likely i, I think this red herring i think that it's yeah it's causing some problems with the dressing um probably from the failure of that chip but I don't think it's actually a PLA fault. Um, so before I do anything else now, I'm going to take this to bits and have a look at this chip underneath the board here, and potentially remove it, um, check the traces, socket it, and uh, maybe give it a retry once I've cleaned everything up and you know, maybe it'll work. So see how I get on with that. So things aren't looking too bad on the underneath of the board here. Um, this is the underneath of the PLA, um, and I believe, can I see it now? I think that's probably the um, colour ramp. Um, so we've got no corrosion or anything going on there. But you'll notice this area here looks like there's been some something leak onto the board. So I'm going to clean that up, inspect the tracks around there. Um, I'm not sure if something's leaked onto this in the past, but yeah, definitely looks a little bit crusty around there. So I'll clean that up as well. Right, have I got moving that now? Um, might get my desoldering station onto this, see how I get on. Quite small pads, it's quite low wattage this iron, so um, I don't know, I'm not sure what's going to happen with regards to these uh, pads on this, this board. This seems slightly better made than the um, the older models. Well, that could just be perception. I always add some solder before I desolder because it contains flux uh, and the flux actually does help desolder the pins. I'm anticipating some of these are going to be easier than others. As soon as you get to a ground plane or a power plane or something where it's a bit thick, where the trace is a bit thicker, that's when it 
it gets a little bit tricky. But I know you can see this, the soles coming out pretty easy on these, so um, should be alright. These are double sided boards, by the way, so um, yeah, if you're not careful, you can get problems because of the solder leaking through to the other side um, or not coming out very well. It's, it's, it's a good idea to clean your uh, the soldering pump out before you start this and perhaps get some oil in it like I usually do at WD-40 and it just makes it uh, gives it extra suction there that makes all the difference when you're doing one of these uh, boards I'm hoping it's not the PLA, I'm hoping it's the red herring due to failure of this chip uh, you know, maybe a catastrophic failure, you know, your typical failure where it just fails to um, store um, you know, work properly is it? in the sense of you know, being able to store and retrieve um, memory if it's um, failed in some other way that could be affecting the bus um, that's what my hope is anyway because if it's not I'm looking for a spare C64C in order to get PLA this, one, this pin here might be a bit tricky because this is the uh, it's like a ground plane I think or plus 5 I don't know not sure which The other thing I'm not sure, whilst I'm removing this, um, I'm not sure, I don't think I've got a replacement for this. What I'm probably going to do is take, if I can, I don't know, it's the same chip probably as off one of the 64C, uh, sorry, 64, original 64 boards I've got, because I've got three of those I'm working on at the moment as well, I will be doing at some point. Um, but I've tested them to see what state they're in, and all, I think, two out of the three. Um, are working to the state where I know that the that SRAM um, is uh, good enough to substitute temporarily in a socket onto this. Um, that pin there is going to be a problem, I think, because that is not dissolving very well. Now, I think this is the side where the corrosion is because these pins are not, the solder is not flowing very well, and I suspect that that's what it is it's the corrosion on the other side. I've got bits of shards of solder here, you've got to make sure you clean these up afterwards. Um, obviously. I'll do that last, just try and get the damn thing off there first of all. Didn't quite. Have a look. Yeah, this is where, like I say, a bit more flux and solder sometimes helps. That's less of that. Curious to what the, um, you know, how, how that chip's got like that. Oh, yeah. You know, just on one side. It's, it's really bizarre. Uh, might have to go over a few of these pins again if it, it's not freed up properly. Especially on this side, because as I said, with the corrosion now, I'm not convinced it's going to be clean enough, um, you know, the, the removal of the solder here on the other side, it might not have uh, completely freed up. Soon find out, only a few more pins to go. This one's, uh, I thought it was ground plane, it's nice. back to that top pin again because it doesn't look anywhere near remotely disordered. I'm going to apply some heat for slightly longer just to heat that track up. There we go, that's done it. So let's uh, just brush that off. Quick look on the magnifier. That's why it pays really, just to check the magnifier because I'm convinced that pin there ain't off properly. There's no point in even trying to uh, remove the chip if you've not removed it all properly. And that one there looks suspect as well. It's 
I'm not sure about that top, top right then. Round. You don't want to put too much pressure on these, just enough just to, if they're just held on by the smallest, smallest bit of solder, they should just push off really easily. That pin there needs some more work because this, um, the solder's not gone all the way through. Let's look them off the other side, I should say. There we go. So once you've uh, freed it, you know, push, put a little bit of pressure on the top, a little bit of pressure on the bottom, and bottom the pins, just, just enough to free them. You have to just wiggle them a little bit, and it should just start to come off there, I think, hopefully, without damaging any traces. There we go. So you can see the chip there, and you can see there's uh, got some corrosion some of these pins, so. I don't know, very odd. So what I'm going to do now is um, get some flux on there. I don't need a lot, I've only got a little bit left in this tube actually, I might just have enough just to do this. I'm just using my desoldering braid here just to um, clean this up a little bit before I put a socket on it. Uh, well, I'll inspect it as well first. So. Melting carpet. Shouldn't be doing this on carpet, should be doing an anti static uh, you know, ESD protection mat or something. Uh, it's not too bad. Let's just cut a bit of that uh, right off. The problem is with this uh, low quality braid that I use, it's, uh, it stops uh, working after a little bit, you know the um, capillary action there stops working after uh, the solder travels up the wick a certain distance. I mean I guess that's probably the case with all desoldering braid but this stuff's pretty crappy really, it really is. Um, let's just get a little bit of solder on to Fact, we'll do it on the other side, clean up the other side. That side's not so bad now. The pins, uh, the pinholes there are looking pretty good. There's a couple of, there's a wire or two, uh, one wire I think that I need to just reflow because uh, the uh, braid's just pulled a bit too much out, but if we turn the board this way around, um, just have a go from this side. Sold on there. I'm not sure why that's not working, other than the fact I'm using crappy braid. Uh, so yeah, what? Let's get the pump on. Top. That'll do. It's not doing a very good job of removing it here. It's something like bloody filling the thing back up again. It's this shitty braid. See if we can get a bit more flux onto there. It doesn't really got any on the underneath, other than what I've just got there from the solder itself. I'll do. Damn wick at the right angle.
Well, it's looking pretty clean, really. There's not really much more into that. I'm going to just uh, make sure there's no bits of solder on there and uh, get some ice to pop onto it. So yeah, that's pretty good. Let's get a bit of uh, wind and stuff off there. It's the only thing, let's just uh, clean that solder away with some mice prop. No, not solder flux. I've got the sneaking suspicion it's not going to be this chip. I've got the sneaking suspicion I'm going to be unlucky. And uh, the corrosion on there is just a complete red herring. And there's probably nothing wrong with the chip, and it's probably the um, PLA. I'd like to think there's a reason for things. I'd like to think that the reason the corrosion on there is something's gone wrong with that chip. Um, it being an SRAM, it could be that internally they have some sort of electrolytic type of uh, technology going on there and uh, that's what the corrosion is. That would be really nice if that was the case. Uh, right, I need to get a socket for this now, so uh, we'll right back. Right, so I've just got to find a socket for this. It's um, just count the number of pins. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, eighteen. Looks like it's eighteen pin, um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to Got any 18 pin sockets? Yeah, that's, that one's just a bit too big. Um, I don't really like trimming these things down. To be honest, I'll try and find one that's just the right size. Back in a minute. Right, I fashioned a socket there. All I've done is trim the end off. Um, put it, put the chip in there. And the easiest way to do it is to, and, and file it down. Just file it so you get a nice, perfectly smooth. Um, edge there. It's not a very professional way of doing that. I prefer to put a new socket in there to be honest, but um, I've not got one. Um, I may as well make use of what I've got there and it will look okay on the board. Um, I need to clean the pins up on this chip obviously. Right, so I'll just get the socket on there now. It's pretty tidy that, despite the fact I've cut it, I've uh, spent a bit of time just making sure it's perfectly formed. Got a bit of solder blocking one of the pins there. But you can see that. Just so. Didn't spot that. There we go. I'll just solder that place now. Right, I found a replacement chip here inside my um, collection of old chips. Um, so I'll switch it off on. Let's give it a try. There you go. That's looking fixed. Let's uh, just switch it back on with the dial card switch to on. I've got a good feeling about this. I think this is going to be okay. I don't think it's the PLA, I'm pretty sure. Um, I, I guess I could have told, to, if I'd got a scope onto that uh, chip, I might have seen something unusual uh, in terms of it outputting when it shouldn't be doing this stuff. Maybe it's, like I say, putting garbage onto the bus or something. But I don't think it's PLA. There you go, PLA, test OK, call the So it's worth noting that if you're using one of these diagnostic cards, uh, you know, you can't just take it as red. If it tells you PLA's faulty, not necessarily. Um, it's only as good as the software that was originally written. And those bads, don't worry about those, it's just because I've not got the loopbacks. Uh, the 652, um, 6526 is the CIA's uh, on the SID 6581. 
Um, I think you need the loopbacks in order to be able to get a proper feedback on those. It's the same with uh, the interrupts and stuff. Uh, I know that because I've tested this, used the same DAG car before on other systems, including the one I've just, you know, the, the, the one I got the other week. Um, that's fine. Right, well, let's get a game loaded. Right, the serial interface is working there now, so it's loading off my SD to IEC. Um, just tested a couple of other chips as well, found that one of my spare SID chips uh, doesn't work. It's, uh, I guess, like ludicrously hot. Um, and you just get like a humming sound coming from the thing when you switch it on. So, uh, it's just... Yeah, so it's a good um, opportunity to test some of my uh, spares for 64Cs. Um, tested my CPU, that's fine. Um, also tested the VIC chip, and the VIC chip works, but you get, a couple, you get some graphical glitching on it, so um, I'll probably only ever use that um, 64C. Vic chip for testing, uh, I guess. Just make sure whenever you ever get a system where it's completely dead, um, it's a good alternative, you know, just to test to make sure um, it's not that. But I can't really use it as a permanent fix to something because, uh, like I say, it's graphically glitching. I was lucky, really, I had that spare um, SROM, I didn't need to take one off the other board. Um, as it turns out, I've taken one of the other ones to bits actually since, just to have a look at the, the, the SRAM chips that are on there for the colour RAM. Um, and they do happen to have this, although it's a different chip, it's the same profile. Um, and one of them is already socketed, so I did give that a try in this board as well, and that works. So that's uh, useful information that you can swap the two between the two different revisions of boards. You know, it's the same chip, it looks, you know, different part of them, but different manufacturers. So exactly the same. Step wise. Excellent. Looks like it's sorted. Brilliant. Looking good, sounding good. Yeah, the interesting thing with this was that, you know, the, 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 red, the false um, start there, you know, the sort of red herring, if you like, the CIA, because um, it wouldn't boot from car, and there was graphical clutches and stuff on the screen. The keyboard wasn't working properly, some of the keys were working, but it was given, you know, they weren't displaying the right characters. But that's, you know, I attribute to that's the keyboard, as soon as I disconnected the keyboard, put the keyboard on, um, suddenly those problems have gone away, including the boot from car. So, um, yeah, I'm surprised it works. Sweet, this is uh, yeah, pretty good. Doesn't seem any dissimilar to me to the, uh, the you know, in terms of how it sounds, uh, this 8580 uh, versus the 6381 uh, or Excellent. I'm pretty convinced I've sorted. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.